Hi, everyone. My name is Omar Awan. I'm the Associate Vice Chair of Education at the University of Maryland, and I'm also the co-director of the Radiology Medical Student Clerkship. And I want to talk today about how to ace your radiology clerkship in medical school. And I think this is an important topic because many of you guys will be taking radiology very soon. Many of you guys will be wanting to get letters of recommendation. And how can you stand out in your radiology clerkship and do a fantastic job and not only get an amazing grade, but also secure amazing letters and secure amazing mentors when doing radiology. So this will be a very brief tutorial. Uh, you know, this is a lot of anxiety for a lot of people because they want to do really well. They don't know how to stand out in radiology. How do you really make an impression in radiology? It's not like internal medicine, pediatrics, surgery, where you can come in knowing tons of knowledge about radiology. So how is it that you can really stand out amongst your peers and make a great impression to the faculty and the residents in the program? How do you secure great letters of recommendation for radiology? Because if you're applying to radiology, you need at least one letter minimum from someone in radiology to say that you're an amazing candidate, obviously. How do you stand out? How do you stand out in radiology in a field where it's not really taught well in medical school and you don't know much about the basics of radiology? And how can you impress with your fund of knowledge? And can you even impress? And quite frankly, you can't really impress those in radiology with your fund of knowledge because you likely don't know much about radiology because it's not taught significantly in the school of medicine, right? So, you know, you're not going to stand out knowing tons of radiology differential diagnoses, but there are ways that you can stand out. And I'm going to give you 10 tips today on how to ace your radiology clerkship, which will put you in a great position, not only to get a great grade, but also to secure great letters and to really propel yourself to do well in the match with radiology. So tip number one, come on time and be prepared. You know, obviously, if the clerkship starts at eight, be there at eight o'clock. Don't walk in at 8.05, right? Don't walk in at 8.07, be there on time and be prepared. Be prepared and have certain expectations for what to expect. And the way you can prepare is really by reviewing certain key resources, one of which is the ACR appropriateness criteria. This is on the web, which you can click on this link here. Uh, it goes over why studies are done. So you should have a good sense for why we do CT studies for, you know, acute diverticulitis or why you would do an MRI for an occult fracture or something like that. So these basic uh, ideas should be very clear to you and it will make you stand out if you have a basic understanding for why studies are done. And even for those that aren't going into radiology, it's always important to know what study to order as a referring physician if you're not a radiologist. Having basic general knowledge about radiology through videos on YouTube or learningradiology.com, these can go a long way in having uh, sort of a background knowledge so that you can benefit from the readouts that are taking place in radiology with the other residents. So having this kind of core knowledge will really allow you to be prepared and, and will propel you to really stand out throughout your clerkship. Tip number two, show your enthusiasm and interest in radiology, right? You, no one is going to write you a stellar letter if you're not enthusiastic about radiology, if you don't care about radiology. So I often see students on their phones texting during readouts. You never want to do that, right? When you want to be engaged in the readout, when an attending physician is showing you a case or is going over studies with a resident, you have to be engaged as well, right? Your energy should be invested in learning radiology. Never, never be on your phone uh, texting or checking emails or things like that. You know, I know it's, you know, something that we're very accustomed to do, but show your respect and show your enthusiasm and your interest by being engaged during the readouts. Tip number three, striking a balance between enthusiasm and being overbearing. And this is a really key point that I want everyone to understand. So, you know, you want to show your enthusiasm, but you also don't want to be overbearing. So what does that mean? Ask questions, but don't overdo it. Don't always be asking questions, right? You have to ask questions to show your interest uh, in the field. And, and they should be genuine. You know, if there's something that, you know, you really want to learn more about, ask your attendees questions, ask the residents questions, but don't constantly be asking questions because the attending physician has to get through the list, right? They have to be efficient. Oftentimes in radiology, we read tons of cases. Be mindful and be respectful of an attending's need to get through the list, the clinical workflow, right? So striking that balance is very key and knowing how to strike that balance 
is very key because quite frankly, if you ask too many questions, you may be perceived as annoying and you obviously don't want to do that. Of course, there's no bad questions, but there's always a time to ask questions. You can often, you know, ask questions to residents after readouts, uh, but, you know, be mindful of this. Tip number four, answer questions when asked, right? So if a question is directed to you as a medical student, answer the question. Don't ask, don't answer questions that are meant for other residents, right? So the last thing you want to do is make a resident look bad. If a resident doesn't know the answer to a question, but you volunteer and answer that question. That's not going to be looked at very pleasantly by residents. And residents should really be your allies, right? They should be the ones that are supporting you and may say very good things about you to attendings when you're applying for radiology residency, right? So you only want to answer questions that are asked to you specifically. Don't ever try and, you know, make someone else look bad. Now, remember, radiology is a team sport. We're all in it together very crucial for the rapport and camaraderie in a radiology reading room. Okay, so only at answer questions when asked. Tip number five, be helpful during readout. So even though you may not know a ton about radiology, there are still creative ways to be very helpful. One of which is to look up patient information in EPIC. If you have access to the electronic medical record, look up basic information. You know, the more you know about a patient, if they're reading out a patient, um, an MRI knee, you know, they're questioning an ACL tear, maybe look at their post-surgical history. That can be helpful to the attending when they're reading out and interpreting. And it'll show the attending that, wow, this person took the initiative to learn more about this patient, thus enhancing patient care, right? So it can do wonders in terms of, you know, their perception of you as a team player. You're promoting patient care. You're trying to be part of the, the team. It'll be great. So always try to be as helpful as possible during readouts. Tip number six. Ask attendings if you can review one or two cases on your own, right? So radiology, the beauty of radiology is doing radiology, not being a passive observer. So the more active you are, the more you're going to like radiology and the more uh, the clerkship will be very natural to you, right? So, you know, doing radiology is key. So often what I do is, you know, oftentimes I'll give my medical students, you know, one or two cases to review on Paxman, which is an online repository where you it's like a mini packs where they can, you know, window and level, uh, interact with the case, and then I'll go over the case with them later on during the day, right? So it's a great way for you to do radiology, practice radiology, and get excited about radiology because you're actively looking at a case. You're pretending like you're a radiology resident, right? If you're just passively observing cases, very hard to get excited about that. So if time permits, always ask your attending if you can maybe review one or two cases if they have time to show you, right? And another key is that you always want to get feedback on those cases. So, you know, later on in the day, ask your attending, hey, do you mind if we take a look at these cases? Can we review these? And that way the learning is very active and you're learning and it'll be very well received by both you and the attending physician. Tip number seven. Excel at your end of the rotation project. This is very important, right? So most clerkships will grade you in some way, shape or form with some sort of big project at the end. In our clerkship at University of Maryland, we asked participants to do a five minute uh, PowerPoint presentation on an interesting case that they did. So excel at that. That's gonna be a large part of your grade. So you wanna take care to prepare your slides, provide high quality images, have great teaching points. This is a chance for you to shine, to show your peers and the attendings how much you know about a certain topic. So take pride in it and do a great job, right? Uh, make it as engaging as possible. There's no rules. So you can make, have questions, have audience response. The more fun and interactive it is, the more likely it is to be well-received, the likely higher grade you're going to get on the project, right? So you should try your best to make it as amazing as possible because it will reflect on your grade, right? So the more you're prepared, just like anything in life, the more likely it is to be well-received, the more likely it is you're going to get a better grade, right? So it's as simple as that. It's, it's, a, it's a basic, probably common sense tip, but something that I think is worth mentioning. Tip number eight, volunteer to work on a special project, right? So this means like doing research, doing some sort of educational initiative, going beyond what the normal requirements are for the clerkship, because this will give you an opportunity to work with an attending or a resident, get to know them. You know, if you get a peer-reviewed publication, you can highlight that as a publication on your EROS CV. This will also be, you know, discussed in your letter recommendation if you ask, you know, your mentor to act, to write about it. You know, so there's a lot of good 
in volunteering to do work on a special project, right? And this will augment your application. This will augment your EROS. It'll make, distinguish you and make you stand out as a candidate when you're applying to radiology. Tip number nine, we're getting close to the end. Establish a rapport with an attendant. Very, very important, right? You wanna to get to know the attending that you're working with because A, they may function as your mentor. B, they may be writing a letter of recommendation for you. And you know, you'll just learn more about radiology in the field by right? the more you interact with attendings and get to know who they are and what and what they care about, right? So get to know them, both not only in the reading room, but maybe you know, set aside a time to meet them in their office or outside of the reading room to kind of just get to know them generally, who they are, what they like, and you know, how they can maybe sort of help you throughout the process of the application, right? Um, this allows for networking, right? So a lot of these attendees will know other attendings at other institutions and some perhaps they can even talk to them about you and your application and perhaps help you get an interview at other places and institutions, right? So this networking and this establishing rapport with attendings is very, very important and critical for your success as a medical student. The more faculty you know, the more they know you, the more they can write about you in a letter of recommendation, the more meaningful that letter of recommendation becomes, right? It's as simple as that, just like anything in life, always, always try to get to know people and, you know, it'll do wonders for you, you know, not only in life, but, you know, in the application process. And the most important tip and the last tip that I want to lead you guys with is, you know, maintaining a high level of professionalism, right? So this is very important, Ricky. This is how are you acting in the reading room? What are your mannerisms like? How are you, you know, interacting with residents, your fellow peers, your attending physicians, you know? getting to know them on a personal level. This is all very important because this is what we do on a daily basis. In radiology, we're interacting with people, your residents, your fellows, your medical students, one-on-one, -on -one, all day long. You're sitting, I'm sitting with a resident all day long, right? So I wanna be able to be comfortable with them. I wanna be like, is this somebody that I can train for four years, right? Is it someone that I'll enjoy being in a reading room with, right? So this level of professionalism is super key in radiology. And often, you know, when I write letters of recommendation, I'm not talking about your USMLE board score. I'm not talking about, you know, what your grades were. I mean, maybe I'll mention it briefly in like a sentence, what your grades were in medical school, but you know, I'm mostly talking about, well, how interested is this person in radiology? How, uh, you know, dedicated is he? Is he hard work? Is he or she hardworking? Is he or she, you know, willing to go the extra mile? You know, are they fun to be with in the reading room, right? You know, these personal traits and characteristics tend to be a lot more important than your actual record in medical school, right? This is when professionalism kicks in, right? So ask questions, be sincere, be engaging, and just be there. Your residents also, get to know your residents. They can be your greatest allies, right? They can go to attendings and tell them, hey, listen, so-and-so, she was awesome. You know, let's give her an interview or she would be a great fit into the culture of this program, right? So they can be huge, not only for your grade, but also for the match, right? So you always wanna to get to know everyone, be nice and courteous to everyone around you. This is often known as the hidden curriculum, right? In radiology where professionalism and these sort of things on how you interact with others, your emotional intelligence, all of these things make you a great clinician. And this is really what we care about the most when we're training you know, the next generation of learners. It's this professionalism that we seek um, in all of our trainees, right? Much more, you know, we can teach you guys radiology, but we can't always teach you to be a respectful person, right? So this is very important and it's very key in the radiology clerkship as well. So I hope that was helpful. I know you guys will all succeed. You guys will all do great. I hope these are meaningful tips for you to ace your radiology clerkship. Uh, leave comments if you have any questions or concerns. Happy to answer them. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in another uh, high yield video. Thank you so much.